meso compounds. These are molecules that contain stereogenic carbons, but they're not chiral because there's a plane of symmetry in the molecule. Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to take a look at diastereomers and determine how we can see the difference between cis and trans diastereomers or configurational diastereomers. So recall that stereoisomers are split into enantiomers and diastereomers. And diastereomers we've seen before in the form of achiral molecules when we have double bonds which could be cis or trans or ring compounds where we could have the groups on the same side or opposite sides but the molecule themselves has symmetry there's planes of symmetry in these molecules that would make them achiral or not different from their mirror images another type of diastereomer is a configurational diastereomer this can occur when you have more than one stereogenic carbon in the molecule they can be stereoisomers that are related not as mirror images but are still different comparing molecules where one of the configurations is the same and the other one has changed. If at least one of them is the same and others have changed, you don't have a mirror image. To have a mirror image, every stereogenic carbon configuration in one molecule has to be the opposite in its mirror image. So if we take a look at the enantiomer of this tartaric acid, uh, what you can see is that that enantiomer does have each configuration opposite. That is, S becomes R, in both of those stereogenic carbons of tartaric acid. These are related as a pair of enantiomers. They are mirror image isomers and not the same. They are not superimposable. If you take a look at this molecule, notice the configuration comparing to either one of those two on the top are not completely opposite or completely the same. That is, one of the configurations has changed and one is the same. In this case, it's not a mirror image, but it is a different stereoisomer. They are not identical to the ones at the top. So this is a molecule which is in a diastereomer relationship to either of the molecules on the top. Configurational diastereomers have more than one stereogenic carbon, where you're, if you're comparing two molecules that are diastereomers, at least one of them is the same, and some have changed. Well, this molecule also has some additional symmetry, which creates a situation which we refer to as meso compounds. These are molecules that contain stereogenic carbons, but they're not chiral because there's a plane of symmetry in the molecule. Thus, its mirror image is going to be identical. And this happens when you have molecules which are symmetric. So for example, you could number the molecule the same from either one side or the other of the carbon chain. So it's got symmetric groups on all sides. And you can see if you take a look at this molecule that there is a mirror plane right down the middle of the molecule. That mirror plane means that the molecule has symmetry and its mirror image is identical. This is what we refer to as a meso compound. Molecules that contain stereogenic carbons but are not chiral because they have a plane of symmetry in the molecule. I have drawn this showing that plane of symmetry easily, but keep in mind that molecules can be represented in many different ways. If I were to draw the molecule like this in an open chain form and showed it in this fashion, it's harder to see the plane of symmetry when drawn that way, but that is the mesoisomer of tartaric acid. Well, another representation which you might see if you go on to uh, biochemistry or other classes that use these, particularly when we're talking about sugar molecules and biological systems, is what we refer to as a Fischer projection. A Fischer projection is a two-dimensional representation with implied stereochemistry, and it's implied that the horizontal bonds in a Fischer projection are actually coming out towards you from the plane of the paper, and the vertical bonds are going away from you in the plane of the paper. And we represent this with all kinds of different sugar molecules, etc. So for example, if you look at tartaric acid and the various diastereomers and enantiomers of tartaric acid, the Fischer projection representations would be like this, where we have the OH groups along the backbone, either both on the same side or on opposite sides in one configuration or the other. These representations imply that the bonds in horizontal are coming out towards us, whereas the bonds in the vertical directions are going away from us from each of those stereogenic carbons. 
that's a Fisher projection. I think this Fisher projections can be a bit confusing and I won't be using them in this class, but you may encounter these at some point in your studies. Well, diastereomers actually can have different physical properties as compared to enantiomers. If we take a look at the stereoisomers of tartaric acid, we can see the top two are related as enantiomers. They are directly opposite configurations, so SS isomer here, its mirror image is the RR isomer. And what you see is that the optical rotation is 12 degrees, but in opposite directions. That's the only difference is the optical activity for those molecules. The melting point is the same, 168 to 170 degrees. The density of the molecule is the same. All the physical properties are identical for these enantiomers. But if you look at the other compound, the meso compound in this case, this is a different stereoisomer from the other two, and it's related to those as a diastereomer. And you'll notice that there's no optical rotation for this because it is meso and achiral, okay? So in this particular example, it's a meso compound. But you'll notice that the melting point is different than the other stereoisomers, and the density is different. It does have different physical properties. This will become important when we think about how we separate stereoisomers. We can easily separate, based on physical properties, a pair of diastereomers, but we would have a hard time separating a pair of enantiomers. So to summarize, we have all kinds of different isomers in chemistry. They can be constitutional isomers where atoms are bonded differently or stereoisomers where they're arranged differently in three dimensions. And within this classification of stereoisomers, we can have them as mirror image isomers, in which case they are enantiomers, or not mirror image isomers, which we refer to as diastereomers. And those diastereomers can be either cis-trans diastereomers or if there's more than one stereogenic carbon, you could have configurational diastereomers.